God, let us give the Lord a hand clap of praise right where you are, my God, because he is so good. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning. Hallelujah. I am Prophetess Tanika Martin, and I greet you on behalf of my leaders, Apostle Vernell and Prophetess Juliet Austin and the entire Wings of Eagles Christian Church family. Welcome to Thrive Service. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Hallelujah for you coming in. Hallelujah to dwell not only with us, but with the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. Father, I bless you and I magnify your name on today, God. I thank you, Lord God, for every person, Lord God, under the sound of my voice, Lord God. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord God, for giving another opportunity for life on today, God. And as such, God, we thank you and we yield every one of our faculties to you, Lord God. All of our senses are in tuned with you and our life is in expectation over what you're going to share with us on today, Lord God. And so we thank you, Lord God. We break open the way for you to come in. Hallelujah. Have a seat. Oh God, speak and do what you desire to do on today in the name of of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I pray that you have your paper and pens ready, my God, and that the Lord would allow you to capture what it is that he is speaking to you. Hallelujah. This morning, I want to share with you from the topic saturated. Hallelujah. My God, I'm going to tell you that when God gives you messages, don't expect not to go through or to experience what he is saying. My God, God, hallelujah, saturated. I love that word. Even as a person, I love words, my God. And as I see the word saturated, I'm reminded of a sponge. When you go into um, a home store where, you know, you go and buy supplies for your home, you can go in and you can buy sponges. Hallelujah. And when you first buy them, they are dry and they are compressed, my God. But the moment that you saturate it, hallelujah, in some water, that thing begins to expand, hallelujah. I want you to hold on to that imagery because this day, this morning, my God, the Lord wants to saturate and expand us, hallelujah. Are you ready to be expanded, hallelujah, my God? God, saturated is defined as to be permeated until no more can be received, to soak thoroughly. And I am talking about a spiritual saturation, being saturated by God, saturated with his word, my goodness. And if you could just go back with me, hallelujah, to that picture of the sponge. When the sponge is saturated with water, you pick it up and the water just begins to drip. Hallelujah. And the Lord wants to drip off of us. Hallelujah. As we go about our daily lives, my God. Hallelujah. So I'm going to read a scripture, Psalm 16 and 11. And it says, thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. I began to meditate on this scripture, hallelujah, and marry it with the definition of spiritual saturation, hallelujah. And there are some points that God gave me to share, hallelujah, about the benefits of being saturated by the Spirit of God and with his word, hallelujah. And I know, hallelujah, that we need this saturation, my goodness. The first benefit of being saturated is that you develop an unoffendable heart. My God, it comes as a result 
of being saturated in God. The word, it washes over your heart so much so until it can no longer absorb but resolves to reject that in which God did not send. We do not want things to come in our lives that drain the life out of us. Only that which aspires to inflate our heart with goodness, faith, encouragement, motivation, and inspires a deeper dedication to the things of God. Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah. There are people living life, and your heart has so much offense, so much rejection. Ah, but God wants to drive it out, and so your heart has to be immersed and saturated in the word. And if you could just see the visual of you placing your heart in the word, my goodness, God begins to cleanse all that stuff off of you and out of you. And even the crevices, my God, the residue, hallelujah. And in turn, he fortifies your heart. So when things come and people are saying things and all of this, when you can absorb it into your heart, God is like, no. I don't want your heart offended. I want your heart strong. Ah! And I want your heart fortified in the name of Jesus. So being saturated with the word of God yields an unoffendable heart, my God. Too many folks are living functionally broken. God is saying this is not your portion. Do not be content when you have not obtained your full healing. Ah, my God. Being saturated allows God to take you through the entire healing process. Like a car being washed of the debris that it has caught in the engine while going to and fro on the highway. I ride up and down the highway Almost every day, my goodness. And there is so much debris. There is so just stuff in the road, my goodness. And if I lift the hood of the car, it's stuff up under there. And sometimes you're going to have to wash that engine out, my goodness. Hallelujah. So that that car, that vehicle can ride smoothly, and God wants you to ride smoothly. He wants you to experience the fullness of your healing. So there are things that got to go. There are things that have to be washed away. My goodness, he does not want us living functionally broken. That means you broken, but you trying to function. But there is a higher and a better use that God wants to get out of you. My God. Hallelujah. He wants to fix you. He wants to heal you. He wants you to know that you ain't got to keep going like that. My God, barely making it. Oh, my God. He wants to heal you. Hallelujah. He does not want you walking and living with a broken heart. Hallelujah. Or a mind that is consumed with all of this other stuff. He does not want your soul log jammed or cluttered with things, my goodness, and is contaminating your inner person. And you cannot operate at the capacity that God wants you to operate at. Oh, my God. We will not be broken. We will pursue our healing, and we will pursue it now by saturating ourselves in the word of God so that we can live. Hallelujah. And yesterday, I was, I knew I had to come and bring this word, and I'm going to tell you, God kept calling me to himself. He's like, saturate. Hallelujah. Saturate. I had to turn the TV off. 
I had to go into another room and just lay in his presence. Hallelujah. And I said, okay, Lord, my God, if you're going to talk about it, you got to be about it. My God. And in the midnight hour, I began to walk. <laughs> and he said, cathedral hearts. Oh, my God. And I said, Lord, what is this? I've taken these notes on my phone, and you're giving me this. And the researcher in me, God's library, and I had to begin to search it out and dig it out. Hallelujah. I don't know about no cathedral hearts. What is this, Lord? Hallelujah. So I had to look up the definition of cathedral. Hallelujah. And etymology, hallelujah. Oh, my God. Etymology says that cathedral is seat. Hallelujah. And so I said, okay, seat and heart. My God. Hallelujah. God wants to sit on the seat of our heart. I'm going to say that. Hallelujah. My goodness. He wants to sit on the chair in our heart. And so I began to like just immerse myself more in his presence. And he said, this is about people hoping within themselves. Ah! Hallelujah. God has given us a work to do, but it's not to be done alone. But we see that I want to build this thing. So we are running our heart. We are making all of the decisions. But God said, I want to come in and I want to sit on the seat of your heart. I want to rule and I want to reign. There are a lot of people trying to build success or trying to reach this place of success. And there's nothing wrong with it. But when you are doing it, and you're not seeking God. That's wrong. The Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, he who builds labors in vain. My goodness. And so the vision that God has given to me and to you is not to be built by me and you. It is to be built by him. Oh, my God. He said, religion and tradition is not to sit on the seat of our heart. He is. Those with this type of heart, the cathedral heart, where you're sitting on the seat of your heart, you doing what you want to do. He said, you become locked into the building of something, and you have become committed to going at the building alone when you need someone to build with you. But as we advance the kingdom of God, it is a shared responsibility. It is a sharing of our strength. My goodness. Because the thing that God has given us to do is bigger than one person. Have you ever heard the acronym together we achieve much or something together we everyone achieves much? And so we are not to be one man shows. My God, hallelujah. You need help. No man is an island. He told me to tell you to stop wearing yourself trying to go at the building of what he has given you alone. Pray for help. Ask God to send your help. And stop trying to finish the unfinishable. The work of God in our lives and in our world is unfinishable. There is no end to the kingdom of God. We never arrive. And I, people say, I've arrived. You haven't arrived. Oh, my God. We are never finished. Whatever you are doing, you need to surrender it to God. 
You do the part that God has given you to do, and God will make sure that the rest is done. Do not think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Be humble. Visionaries, God gives us vision to do things. And sometimes when we do this, just say it's a conference or a retreat or a workshop, God is responsible for the long-term effects of it. And so he makes sure that his will is done in the long run. My goodness, he is the lifeblood in the outcome of what we are to do. Do what he tells you to do and go as he instructs you to. Do not try to build according to your need for attention. Do as he instructs you, and he will oversee the totality of the projects. He is the master planner and the sustainer of all life. He knows when to build and when to tear down, and when he sits on the seat of your heart, he does just that as he wills. He allowed me this morning to see this in a dream. What God is using you to build contains components for other people to enjoy and to come into the knowledge and admonition of who he is. It is not solely for you. It is for others to grow, learn, rest, reset, compose as in right, and to become what he has called them to become. When people come to an experience that in which God gave you to build, they do not belong to you. They belong to him. Do not try to harbor them or confine them. He said his people are to be free, free to grow and free to thrive. Oh, my God. I went to the word. And in 1 Chronicles 28, David assembles all of these people in the kingdom. And pretty much he tells them, that I thought I was going to build the temple for the Lord. My God, I thought I was going to do it. But the Lord told me I won't because I am a man of war. Ah, my God, he needed a person that was a person of peace to build a temple. And that was David's son, Solomon. And so David released that assignment to his son. He accepted who he was, what he had done. He knew it's not my role to build the temple. This role is the role of my son. But David had the blueprint. My God, you can go and read it. He gave it to Solomon. It had all the details. Some of us are going to have to do the legwork. My God. And some, of, some, people, some other people are going to be carrying out aspects of the vision, aspects of the blueprint. We have to know our role. Oh, my God. It's in the word. I didn't even know. Cathedral heart. Oh, my God. Mm, mm, mm. I was like, Lord, for real, where are you taking me with this? Succession planning is so vitally important. It's important. David wanted to build a temple all by himself because that was in his heart to do, but it was not for him to finish the work. I want to share that God speaks in part. <laughs> he instructs in part. He can deliver in parts and strategize in parts. God may give you the, the vision, but you are not to keep the vision all together by yourself. Ah, at some point you must share it with others so that they can run with it and or do their part with what grace God has given them to do it. You can't do everything and you cannot do it alone anyway. And I said, Lord, what is the point of all of this? He wants us to know that we need help to do it. I don't know what your it is, but you need help my God, when you're going through in life, you need help. And you're going to have to call for help. You're going to have to ask the Lord to send help because you're going to need help to do what you got to do 
You're going to need help to live. You're going to need help to make it through the valley. This is why God needs to sit on the throne of your heart. Not you, not yourself, not tradition, not religion. Ah! Not what they say, not people pleasing. None of this is to occupy the seat on your heart, just God. He is the cathedral in which the patterns and records and abilities of your life are constructed in the earth, my God. Unless the Lord builds the house, he who builds labors in vain. My God, I'm going to get ready to close. Hallelujah. Saturation reveals that you are not alone. And you do not need to isolate, be ashamed, or be restricted to the past, or to have to war or do battle alone. There is help, and help will be sent to you in your time of despair. God will come and get you, my God. And God will send people to come and help you. And God will send people to lift up your arms. My God, hallelujah. As the body of Christ, we must know that we do not have to do life alone. In Luke 10, you'll find that when Jesus sent the, the people out, he's sitting them out two by two. Hallelujah. Wisdom comes in the saturation. My God, it washes over your mind, it cleanses your heart, and it gully washes your soul. Saturation reveals that spiritual things need spiritual attention. You are a spirit that lives in a body that possesses a soul. In order for you and I to thrive, we must first understand that the spirit is always willing, but the flesh is weak. In order to control your flesh, your spirit must be strengthened, built up, fed that which is nourishing. It builds, it's sobering, cleansing, awakening, correcting, loving, and that which will keep you fastened to the king. Ah! When our spirit is strong, the decisions and actions of our lives are handled in grace break spaces because we know when to saturate and soak in the presence without hesitation. My God, we know when we need to go into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. We need to get some of this stuff off of us. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. May we get to this place. May we recognize it without error. May we recognize it without prolonging. My God, my soul needs Jesus. My mind needs Jesus. My heart needs Jesus. Hallelujah. God is willing to go with us while we go through our processes of becoming who he designed us to be. Do not leave him out of the equation transformation. Being saturated with the word yields transformation, and this transformation expresses and yields fruit in our lives because we choose to accept it and live it. As we live it, we are changed by it. We choose and do not resist the transformational power of God's revealed word in our lives. My God, hallelujah! We let it do what it is supposed to do. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul says, We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glory, might so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light, my God. Hallelujah. Whoo! Jesus, my God, I'm going to bring it home, Brother Kenny. Hallelujah. God woke me up. Oh, my God, he has just, I've had two hours of sleep. My God saturated. Hallelujah. He told me to tell you, To be discerning of mice who come to eat the seed stored in your barns, your homes, and your businesses. These are malicious, investigative, critical enemies. God, wash them away now and help us to seal up any and every crack within our lives where they have gained entry in the name of Jesus. Block access. Oh, my God. 
Hallelujah. Let us not be so overwhelmed with information that we have no wisdom or revelation knowledge. Being saturated with the sword of God, the word of God, has to be our first and top priority in this life. Not the aggregation of useless information without the capacity for proper appropriation and interpretation. That's the librarian in me. Hallelujah. He speaks my language. In other words, my God, do not fill your mind, heart, and soul with things that block your ability to clearly hear, receive, and interpret what God wants you to speak. My God, an acronym for saturate. Soaking always transforms understanding, revealing accurate truths eternally. My God, hallelujah, that's what we want. We want the truth of God, and we want to offload anything that God did not send us. My God, take it off of us, God. Hallelujah. Saturate us in your presence. Immerse us in your presence, God. Hallelujah. Fill us with your word. Hallelujah. Fill us with your word, oh God, and we willingly desire to be filled with your word. Fill us with your word, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise, Lord God. Hallelujah. You are a wonder in my soul, Lord. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Lord God, for being the author and finisher of my faith, Lord. I thank you for being the beginning and the end, the God of the middle, my God. God, you are so good. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you, God, for the people who have heard this word. I thank you, Lord, God, for pricking them in their hearts. Oh, God, hallelujah. See on there. Do what you will. Hallelujah. Have your way in our lives, oh, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, that these words have fallen on fertile ground in the name of Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you, oh, God. Hallelujah. We love and we adore you, oh God. Hallelujah. Our soul praises you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. You are so good. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We bless you, oh God. Hallelujah. We invite you, hallelujah, to join us, my God, virtually at 11 a.m. for service, my God, or in person. Our doors are open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, come in and saturate. You ain't got to be dressed fancy, my God. Come in your jeans and your sneakers and your T-shirt. Hallelujah. Come get Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. My God, thank you, Father, for this word, oh God. If you do not know Jesus, Lord and Savior in your life, this is your invitation right where you are to receive him into your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord God. At this time, hallelujah, the media ministry will share with you ways to give. Sow a seed. Hallelujah. Sow a seed. Hallelujah. Sow a seed. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining our service today. We believe that your life will be changed through this message. If you would like to learn more about Wings of Eagles Christian Church, please visit woechristianchurch.com. Tap the About tab to know our pastors. Tap Contact to connect with us. Feel free to also see Inside Woe. On Sunday we have a virtual Thrive teaching on Facebook at 9.30 and in-person corporate worship at 11 a.m. with our full band and praise team. In keeping with our mission and vision, WO has many ministries designed to train, equip, and provide hands-on support to every member of your family. If you would like to make a donation, then feel free to give via text message. Step 1. Text GIVE25 or any other amount to 919-551-3675. Step 2. Follow the prompts. Step 3. Register your credit or debit card. It's only required for the first time only. Join us virtually on Facebook at 7 p.m. on Wednesday evening for Life Class. Visit us in person at 1418 Avondale Drive, Durham, North Carolina, 27701 Suite 15. Hey, if you're still down, don't stay grounded. Get up and soar high.